Hello guys and gals and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Today I have with me Jimmy Choo Choo Chonga Supreme. Uh, she finally came to see me. Uh, if you watched last episode, uh, she didn't come to see me uh, last episode. I was, uh, I was trying to get her to come over and she didn't come over. And I'm sad. I was very sad that she didn't come over, but now she did. So, uh, so I guess, uh, I guess all is right in the world. She, uh, she finally came to see me with her claws out. <laughs> with her claws out. She said, what? What? Stab you in the chest with more claws? Yes, you like claws? So today we're going to be looking at uh, a very specific helmet. Um, it is called the Veil of Steel. The Veil of Steel is a very interesting helmet. And, uh, and quite honestly, it is really nice. But I think it just kind of gets overshadowed by a lot of other items that are also very nice. And, uh, and let's go over the item together, and we'll talk about uh, what it could potentially be good for, and um, what it might not be good for. Uh, so here I have two versions of the Veil of Steel. I have an ethereal version, and I also have a uh, non-ethereal version. Um, now, I, the reason why I have an ethereal version is because it would be very good to put on a mercenary, uh, specifically for the defensive capability of it. Um, now, right off the bat, you'll notice that it has a really high defense of 396, and, uh, and the strength requirement is really high at 192, which is one of the big downsides of the Veil of Steel, is the really high strength requirement. Uh, we also have a level requirement of level 73, uh, which is also relatively high. So this item is going to be judged on the merits uh, as an endgame item uh, because it is postured as an endgame item. Um, it has a bonus to defense of 60% enhanced, uh, which is uh, static, by the way. It does not change. It also has a flat defense bonus of 140, which is pretty massive because most helmets don't even have that much defense to begin with. Um, it also has all resistances 50 on it, which is static, uh, which is actually pretty cool considering a lot of other helmets and things like that that have resistances on them tend to vary the resistances, uh, like, for instance, Kira's Guardian. Uh, we also have a, um, a uh, 15 to strength, which is static, a 15 to vitality, which is static, and uh, my, my cat just pressed the help button. Um, and negative four light radius, which most people don't care about. Of course, you could also put a socket in this helmet, um, and you could make it even stronger uh, by adding something, you know, like maybe um, increased attack speed, or put an umrune in here for more resistances, um, or, you know, even if you have fewer super rich, maybe a 15% IAS, uh, 15 all res jewel. Um, all in all, it's definitely an amazing helmet, and, uh, and very, very defensive in many, many ways. There's not a lot of offensive ta uh, abilities on this helmet. Um, the strength is probably the only offensive ability on the helmet, because it gives you a little bit of extra damage, uh, you know, obviously. But uh, strength also helps you put on more heavier armor, which can also be a good thing. Now, the Ethereal version also has uh, the same stats, but it also has a higher defense of 524. And, uh, and this is an elite item, which means it cannot be upgraded. Um, so this is the final stats, the final countdown, so to speak. Uh, there may be a little bit of a variable, um, I think, in the, the defense, just from like the base defense numbers, but it's not going to be very, uh, not going to be very much. Uh, we also have uh, some interesting things to think about with this particular helmet. Um, if I'm wearing this, I'm going to be giving up plus the skills. I'm not going to be able to get plus two skills on my helmet. Um, there's no physical damage reduction on here. Um, and when compared to something like Kira's Guardian, Kira's Guardian has Cannot Be Frozen, which is also a very, very nice effect. And, uh, and I feel like in that regard, Cannot Be Frozen on Kira's Guardian actually kind of wins out. In fact, I feel like we need to compare this to Kira's Guardian. So Kira's Guardian has a much lower defense of only about 170, um, and it does not have the plus to stats. So we don't get plus strength, and we don't get plus vitality. Um, however, Kira's Guardian does have more resistances. Um, instead of all resistance 50, it has all resistances 50 to 70, so it can roll as low as 50 and as high as 70. It also has cannot be frozen on it and faster hit recovery, uh, which is two very nice statistics. And uh, and quite honestly, it, the stiff competition that Veil of Steel has is literally Kira's Guardian. I feel like Kira's Guardian is the main reason why people don't use Veil of Steel. Because if you have a Veil of Steel sitting around, and you have a Kira's Guardian sitting around, um, the two... <coughs> 
probably always going to choose Kira's Guardian. Especially if it's for a mercenary, because I feel like the cannot be frozen is just a really amazing effect for mercenaries, and in general is going to help you out a ton. Now the only thing that I can think of off the top of my head of the reason why you would use this over Kira's Guardian is for the plus to strength. Say you found this early on in the ladder um, or something like that and um, you wanted to put an Insight Colossus Vulge on your Merc. Uh, Insight Colossus Vulges tend to have 200 strength requirement and, uh, and this having a plus 15 strength on here is definitely a big boon to a Mercenary. The All Resistance is 50 of course is also going to help out your lower level Mercenary until he gets to a higher level and his resistance is even out a little bit better. Um, and in general the defense is also going to help him out extraordinarily. Um, I do feel like, however, that Kira's Guardian would still be a better choice in this regard. Um, it has faster hit recovery, cannot be frozen, and all resistances as well. And the faster hit recovery is very important for mercenaries, as well as the cannot be frozen is very important for mercenaries. Um, this particular helmet I feel like just lacks um, because of its stiff opposition. There are so many other helmets, there are so many other items that could potentially be better than this particular item and despite the fact that it is not a bad item it really is not um it is not better than its opposition and uh, and that's that's really just the issue with this particular item um if you wanted to find this particular helmet uh, let's uh let's actually kind of look and see uh what we could find this or who we could find this from shall we so we're going to go over to Silos Pen, which is a very in nice website for drop chance calculation. And uh, we're going to look at Veil of Steel. We're going to go to Boss, and we're going to pretend that we have about 300% magic find, because this is a relatively high level helmet at level 73, and I do feel like that's high enough level that you should be running some pretty nice magic find by that point. Um, so we're going to look at bosses first, and uh, we're going to look at the probability. And so it looks like here um, on non-quest kills, it's pretty much just Bale and Diablo. Um, as well as Neilathak with a pretty crappy eight, 1 in 18,943 chance, which is not great. Let's take a look at Super Uniques real quick. And uh, on Super Uniques, uh, we've got also a pretty crappy list, in my opinion. Uh, Pindle Skin, however, can drop this with a 1 in 26,798 chance. Pretty awful. Um, Thresh Socket, uh, Doc Farron, uh, uh, Grand Visor of Chaos, Effector of Souls, Lord Day Seas, those are all good targets. Um, Eldris, the Rectifier, Shank, the Overseer, Hephaesto, the Armor, all very good targets. Um, in fact, it looks like you could do a really simple method, which is what I like to do sometimes, is you teleport up with Doc Farron, to Doc Farron and kill Doc Farron. Um, you teleport up to uh, Shank the Overseer, you kill Shank the Overseer. You teleport up to Eldritch, you kill Eldritch. You teleport up to uh, Thresh Socket, and then you kill Thresh Socket. Uh, where's Thresh Socket right here? Um, and then uh, you go back to town and you murder Pindle and uh, rinse repeat. And that's pretty simple as that. You could also kill Pindle first if you want to. Um, you don't have to kill him last, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Pindle is easy to get to, his portal's right in town. Um, not a bad little combo there if you want to try and find yourself a Veil of Steel. And of course, those monsters can drop a lot of other good items too, so there's a very good chance you can get something else that you might need in the process. Um, anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, um, even when it is about the Veil of Steel. And, uh, and this is what it looks like, by the way. Let's go back to the um, main menu. Very, very horny. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. Give you some butthead laugh. <laughs> and anyway, as always, keep watching.